Paul has always had an issue trying to figure out what to do with overtime. The college one is totally cringy and hokey. The NFL, they've moved it, changed it, altered it multiple times. A little confusing for the viewer. Everybody's worried about fairness. But what you're really worried about is, is the Super Bowl decided in overtime because some team didn't get a chance. So listen, there's a little bit of controversy. I think it's ridiculous that Kyle Shanahan won the coin toss in overtime and elected to take the ball. There's a lot of logic that says take the ball. Let me lay it out for you. I have an A-plus offensive coach. I have an A-plus running back. I have A-plus playmakers and skill people. I would have taken the ball. Plus, both these defenses have been on the field a lot. There were 150 total plays. San Francisco's defense had just been on the field for 11 plays. They look gassed. I get it. I don't have a problem with the decision. But what happens in the media too often is it becomes about the result. And that's where this anger, the headline today is how Kyle Shanahan lost the Super Bowl after winning the overtime flip. For the record, San Francisco, it worked. They had a 13-play drive. Brock Purdy got him down to the red zone. First and 10 at the 15. It worked. <laughs> but they had to settle for a field goal because Purdy, once again, couldn't handle the blitz. It worked. Just be honest about it. The game went to overtime. Mahomes, on a fourth-quarter heater, beat Brock Purdy, who was struggling with the blitz. Does that sound like a shocking outcome? A coin flip did not decide the Super Bowl. Andy Reid and Mahomes systematically, along with Travis Kelsey, going eight for eight in overtime, decided the game, not a coin flip. There's a lot of logic. It had never happened before. And here's Kyle and Andy Reid discussing it. This is something we talked about with, you know, there, none of us have a ton of experience of it, but we went through all the analytics and talked to those guys, and we just thought it'd be better if we wanted the ball third. Um, if both teams matched and scored, we wanted to be the ones that had the chance to go win. And um, we got that field goal, so we knew we had to hold them to at least to a field goal. And if, if we did, then we thought it was in our hands after that. There's two ways you can go with it. You can either kick it off or you can receive it. Um, and I'm not sure there's a right answer necessarily. Ours was ended up being the right one, but <clears throat> that easily could have gone the other way. So, uh, But uh, that's what we felt was the right thing to do. Um, I'm never going to question Kyle because he's brilliant. For the record, Mahomes had been on a heater in the fourth quarter and eventually in overtime. If you had Mahomes and the way you just worked the ball down the field, the way Hardman and Kelsey and Pacheco and they were – Rasheed Wright, they were sort of starting to work the Niners' defense, and you'd have won the coin toss. I think you could have taken the ball as well again. That's not what decided it. There's always, whenever you lose to Brady or you lose to Mahomes in a Super Bowl, somebody on the other side is going to take the hit. Purdy was 3 for 12 on third down and couldn't get the ball to Debo, Ayuk, Kittle. Couldn't get the ball to him. We're blaming a coin flip? Seriously? It had never been done before. There was no precedent or history. To me, that didn't decide the game. But somebody... Somebody has got to take the heat for San Francisco when the truth is there's nobody to blame. Mahomes won it. It's what he does. J Mac with the news. No, 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 no. Turn on the news. This is the Herdline News. Oh boy. Uh, lot, lots going on. Kelsey, Chris Jones, young players getting better, draft and develop at the top level. I felt terrible for San Francisco. Not for Purdy. He's a kid, probably gets back there. Certainly an easier route in the NFC than the AFC. But let's not pretend that Purdy was great on third down or could handle the blitz or was able to sprinkle the ball to his star players. He couldn't. He couldn't get it to Debo. Kittle disappeared. Ayuk, nothing. That was the difference. Good story, good quarterback, great wins this game. All right, J-Mac, uh, good news is they're not paying Brock for a lot of years, so they're going to retain most of these guys. So San Francisco's going nowhere. A little old, kind of expensive, going nowhere. It should be noted also, I think you saw this, 
Kansas City's a very young team. Young guys get generally hurt less and for a shorter time. San Francisco had multiple guys go down. Kittle's been hurt before. Debo's been hurt before. So San Francisco's not at a crossroads, but you can see San Francisco having to make a couple of decisions with older, expensive players. But it wouldn't shock me, and I'm all for it, if these two ended up back in the game. It doesn't, to me, puncture the regular season's importance. These are great football operations. One team outplayed the other for big chunks, but Kansas City now makes a habit of being great late when it matters most. Certainly. Uh, I got to pace myself. We got three hours here. So, I mean, there's a million takeaways. I think one huge takeaway, Spagnuolo was incredible on the biggest high leverage spots. Third and four late regulation. McDuffie coming in on the blitz. Purdy has no chance there. I mean, McDuffie untouched. And if you watch the blitz, he backpedals like he's in coverage yeah. and then shoots through like a cannon. Yeah. I mean, it's incredible. And then Chris Jones, who's going to be a free agent and going to get paid by somebody. Wow. On that third down in overtime, basically dumps, just tosses the guard aside. And it's just like in Purdy's grill. Purdy had a guy open in the end zone because the defender slipped. But he, he had no time. Chris Jones is in no, It reminded like, me very much of Aaron Donald against Joe Burrow. Yeah. There were a series of high leverage plays, and Donald is unblockable. Yeah. That's the tough decision for Kansas City. Chris Jones is so good. And he's so good, to your point, in the biggest moments. And he's expensive, and there's Mahomes and Kelsey. Yeah. So San Francisco will retain, because of Purdy's lack of salary, virtually everybody. May move off Kittle, we'll see. we got to talk. This, this whole, like, I know linebacker, they got the best linebackers in the league. You know, Greenlaw goes out. Okay. I, I would rather have a Snead and a McDuffie than a Warner Greenlaw. Really? I'm sorry, I would rather have great quarterback, because he, he, he took a couple shots at Debo. I think he had two drops. But he's not getting open against those guys. No, I mean, Neither was I you. McDuffie. You know, I'd rather have great corners than great linebackers. Absolutely, and I think most GMs agree. The superbly versatile all-electric EQB for Mercedes-Benz is a compact SUV that's full of big surprises. Optional fold-out third row offers luxurious comfort up to seven occupants. Almost 24 cubic feet of cargo space means this compact SUV is big enough to handle anything you can throw at it or in it. Get the tone. Set the tone any way you like. Listen to this. 64 color customizable ambient lighting throughout. And like every Mercedes-Benz EV, the EQB features the very latest generation MBUX voice activated tech. So whether you want to set a new destination, change the tunes, turn up the heat, all you have to say is, hey, Mercedes. The vehicle all electric, the feeling all Mercedes. Test drive the EQB today at your local dealer or learn more at MBUSA.com slash E. QB. That's MBUSA.com slash EQB. And Peyton Manning for barking at a coach or a teammate or an official. I've seen Patrick Mahomes bark at Andy Reid and uh, Eric B. Enemy. And then in the second quarter after a Isaiah Pacheco fumble and Travis Kelsey wasn't getting looks, uh, he bumped into Andy Reid in the sideline, and the first thing I thought is, oh, boy, here go the overreactions. Listen, he had one yard in the first half. He eventually led the game in uh, catches, so he was right, <laughs> and Andy hurt him and didn't hold the grudge. Mahomes had 134 passer rating targeting Kelsey. He wasn't getting any looks. Instead, the young running back had just fumbled. Listen, I'm a head coach. I'm going to take a hip check from the greatest tight end ever to win a Super Bowl. Ideally, they don't bump, but this is sports and emotion. The sidelines are jammed, and Kelsey wasn't saying, my girlfriend flew in from Tokyo. Get me the rock. He was saying, I won't fumble. I've had dominant playoff performances. There are holes here. Design stuff for me. Call my number. So credit to Andy Reid not to be petty and hold grudges. You just have to understand, whenever I see people talk about sports and, and they, they are outraged by stuff, I think, did you play it? High school games have yelling and screaming. College games do. You don't think this game, the most watched professional football game in American history with legacies and billions on the line, Kelsey wasn't being selfish. Kelsey was saying, we can't move the ball. I've got a yard. He wasn't saying, pad my stats, get me a bonus. I want to show off to my girlfriend. He was, we're not moving the ball. What are we doing? We just fumbled going in for a touchdown. Get it to me. 
They listened, they did, and eventually Kelsey was a primary reason they won. Here's the coach and the player after. The part I love is he loves to play the game, and he wants to help his team win. I mean, it's not a selfish thing. That's not what it is, and I understand that. And so as much as, um, it, you know, he bumps into me, I get after him, and we understand that. The greatest coach this game has ever seen. He's unbelievable at not only dialing up plays and having everybody prepared, but he's one of the best leaders of men that I've ever seen in my life. And um, he's helped me a lot with that, with channeling that emotion, with channeling that passion. And um, I owe my entire career to that guy and being able to um, kind of control um, how, how emotional I get. And um, I just love him, man. I have defended Draymond Green. I have defended Travis Kelsey. There were times I defended Dennis Rodman. Sometimes there are players, and Kelsey is one of them, who broke into this league and didn't really know how to channel his emotions. If Travis Kelsey goes to a lot of teams, he doesn't have this career. But he gets Reed, stability, a great organization, Mahomes, and he's turned himself into, as I, as I watched this game yesterday in the second half, I thought, you know, he and Gronk, that's about the best tight ends I've ever seen, and they were always great in big games. But this is not a sport without pimples and flaws and moments and emotion. And if you played sports, even at a high school or college level, you yell, you scream, these are millionaires, they're worth 100 plus million, they want the ball. And I never feel, ever feel that Travis Kelsey is selfish. I never feel that. He is so passionate, he can struggle even at Chiefs practice to harness that emotion, but again, the rock star is not the accountant. Sometimes they trash a hotel room. It's the cost of art, <laughs> right? It's the cost of it, and the cost of coaching Travis Kelsey, one of the most competitive players I've ever seen is, sometimes the emotions spill out. He didn't take a swing at anybody. It was a hip check. Probably shouldn't do it, but the fact that Andy Reid gets it and for the record, I've known people in that building. We don't talk about it much. Andy Reid is tough on players. Andy Reid is one of the last coaches, if not the last, that practices hard. The Chiefs practice hard. They hit. They're intense. And it creates this sort of emotion that sometimes bubbles up in the biggest moments. I've seen Mahomes screaming at Reid. I've seen last year in the big game. This year, I see it's Kelsey screaming at Reed. That's the relationship, right? It's not indifference. It's intensity all the time, and I'm okay with it. I'm not looking for perfect. I understand there's pimples. All right, um, for the record, Niners, do we ever learn? The lines are out. The Niners are favored to win the Super Bowl next year. <laughs> we never learn. Good luck betting against Mahomes. Good luck. I, I wish you the very best of luck. McIntyre, he bet Niners. I'm tell, I'm not I'm not betting against Reed Mahomes for another seven years. In any big game. Colin right, Colin wrong next on a Monday. Town pretty beats the blitz. That puppy's over. They're bleeding the clock. Here's Shanahan after the loss. There's nothing different to say. I mean, I don't care how you lose when you lose the Super Bowl, especially ones you think you can pull off. Um, it hurts. But um I mean I think I don't know, when, you, when you're in the NFL, I think every team should hurt except for one at the end. Uh, we've gotten pretty damn close, but uh, we haven't pulled it off, and we're hurting right now, but it doesn't take away from how proud of our guys I am. Um, I'm real proud of them today, too. Um, that's part of sports. It's part of football. It's part of life. But um I'm glad we put ourselves out there, and I love our team, and we'll recover, and we'll be back here. We'll be back next year strong. Yeah, I mean, if you look at who their challengers are in the NFC, a very talented, albeit super young Green Bay team. Mm -hmm. Detroit, although it sounds weird saying the Lions are the biggest obstacle, I think Philly and Dallas are getting a little creaky. We don't know if they love their coaches. Yeah. Rams will be viable if they hit another three or four draft picks. But San Francisco should be favored. I think San Francisco quietly would be like, listen, can we get Burrow? <laughs> Can we get Lamar in this game? Can we get Josh Allen? We've done the Mahomes thing. We've dominated them both times and lost. There is something to be said about this matchup for them with Mahomes. And, and the other thing is, when you play defense and you're Bosa, they were really dominant in the first half. 
But there were 150 plays in this game. And the truth is, when you're a dominant defense early, it doesn't mean you're a dominant defense late. And in the first half, when there were a lot of three and outs for Kansas City, that San Francisco defense was fresh and ready and going. And... But by the end of the game, Mahomes eventually figures it out, and you can't ask defensive players to do a nine-play drive, an 11-play drive. They're worn out. And so it, I always felt that the offensive player is attacking and knows where he's going. There's a stress to being a defensive player and chasing and not knowing and overcoming and guarding. And I thought San Francisco's defense, as great as it was, they're human. Yeah. I mean, you can't ask these guys to go on 11 play defensive drives at the end of a four-hour game and be fresh, not to mention stress creates fatigue. This game is the most watched game in the history of the country. There's stress. I, I, I almost wonder which of these two losses hurt Shanahan more. Because I told you my swan. Yeah, my, my biggest bet was first half Niners. I love the teaser. Like, everything hit except the full game. Because if Mahomes gets the ball late, it's all like he's just going to go down the field and score. That's what he does. Yeah, I've got to feel bad for Shanahan. Oh, I, I feel, unless you're a KC fan, obviously. But I feel terrible for Shanahan. It's just, it sucks. And, and, and he's he no, did almost everything right. No, I thought they I thought they had the only criticism of Shanahan. In the third quarter, they abandoned Christian McCaffrey. It's like, no, 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 no. Well, the Chiefs did adapt. The Chiefs, they changed the defense, and San Francisco couldn't get a first down for like six minutes. They couldn't do nothing with the ball. What really hurt was that interception when Mahomes threw that terrible pick. You're like, oh, Mahomes melting down. They couldn't do anything. They couldn't get, like, give me three there. Give well, me at least a field goal. Taking the ball in midfield. We talked about this. Special teams is almost oh. always a factor in big games. I mean, you go to the national championship, big games, we never talk special teams. A blocked PAT and a fumble on a punt. And that fumble. Wait, I think it hit the guy's ankle. It did. Like, that's yeah. just unlucky, man. Well, it, it is. I mean, that's. It, it,